All of the Guizhong art and illustrations in this video was made by Astroma. You can go follow them on at Astroma2 on Twitter. Go support them. They were really nice in letting me use their art and I want to return the favor, so go. The Goddess of Dust, Guizhong, Morax's quote-unquote friend, was a very compassionate, kind, and really empathetic god towards humans. Guizhong sympathized with the humans because she saw herself in them since she was a relatively weak god. She had to rely on being smart to rise above her weaknesses. Just like how humans, who are weak and insignificant compared to gods, use intelligence to become better. Reminds me of a certain nation that had impeccable scientific and technological advances. Mm? People have speculated that Guizhong died by another archon or was killed by Morax himself because she became corrupted. But me? Nah. I'm here to just drop angst and tell you a theory that's sadder than what the previous theories have come up with. Also, since we're here, you should you should subscribe. Just go down there and just hit the button. I'll upload like once every other month or something, so you don't have to worry about me taking over your subscription feed that much. Come on, 99.5% of you aren't even subscribed. Do it. Press the button. Just scroll down, go into your little scroll bar, beep, 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 and then press the button, the red button that says subscribe. Boop. And also, I stream on twitch.tv slash lore underscore Enzo live. If you wanna check me out, you know, I talk. Anyways, on with the video. Marx and Guizhong were two gods that worked together in taking care of the people of the Guili assembly. And it was very sweet. Marx was a harsh and cold god. He was previously known as the warrior god even because of his gamer kill death ratio. And Guizhong telling Marx to be more compassionate and caring for humans. And it was all very cute, you know. Guizhong even said that Zhongli's bronze and Guizhong's brain, they'd be an unstoppable force that could keep Guili assembly safe and prosperous. She taught her people agriculture and all that stuff to be prosperous, along with the other adepti and our favorite god, Guoba. They are basically just playing Sim City, and it was all fun and games until they started playing a battle royale. So the Archon War came and it basically just ruined and destroyed Guili Assembly no matter how much Morax, Guizhong, and the Adepti tried to defend it. And as Guili Assembly died, so did Guizhong. She lost her life after a battle in the Assembly. How sad. Sad. There's gonna be more sad. The two gods first met each other in a field of glazed lilies and there, she basically gave Morax a burr puzzle as a gift, as a sign of their friendship and also a challenge to Morax. They're basically like notched boxes you have to open it's like a puzzle these things are the ones you see floating around zhongli in his idol animation or the meteor shape of his burst and more importantly the memory of dust not to mention the arrow see the right weapon ascension materials also look like burr puzzle pieces but that doesn't really have any relation to guizhong it just says that it's part of a meteor made of rex lapis's raw power that got stained by blood from the monsters of the cataclysm. Now, the memory of dust has a very important lore description that contributes to what we know of Guizhong, since it is literally about Guizhong's life beliefs and her death. Here, we learn that she doesn't just like humans, she loves them. Because they are afraid, they try so hard to become more intelligent. This, I understand. Here, we also learn the last moments of Guizhong. It says that her final smile was a lonely one, and she tells Morax to forget about the puzzle piece she challenged him to solve, which is really sad. So after I cried, I thought, huh, why did she tell him to forget about it? Why did she have a lonely smile even though Morax was by her side? Well, those are the questions that I want to answer speculatively on, because I think that Morax healed Guizhong not because Guizhong got corrupted, as many people believed, but because Guizhong did something that made Morax have to kill her. Guizhong is a very smart goddess. She even created a Guizhong Ballista that could make a significant damage towards powerful beings like Osile. But how did she create this Ballista? Well, <laughs> at some point, Guizhong and the Adepti created the Realm of Clouds or what we know now as the Voyage of Sanguine Sky a level from the hidden palace of Guizhang formula domain. And the description of the voyage of Sanguine Sky says this. This is the realm of clouds. Guizhong, its former ruler, acquired several ancient and evil artifacts during her research into mechanics. The Adepti created this realm to contain them. And to add to this, in the domain we fight two ruin guards and one ruin hunter. 
So she actually is researching this ancient Kainrian technology. And it's not only the technology she's meddling with. No, she's meddling with Kainrian artifacts and not just technology. Maybe she wanted to understand how a nation with no god prospered? Maybe her lust for knowledge was just unstoppable? Or is it something else? Like, I don't know, understanding her power more? During Albedo's collected miscellany, Dainsleff says this. But I know it well. It hails from Kanria, the art of Chemia. Soil and chalk, the universe and earth, pure dust and the birth of human life. There is no mistaking it. I am content to watch most crises play out from the sidelines. But if Albeda were ever to make a single wrong move, I could not let myself ignore it. In Albedo's character details, it also says this. The universe is heaven reversed. The earth is a dream lost to time. This is dust, the most basic form of complex life. As if to provide evidence for this claim, Albedo lifted the burnt ash of the flower that once grew atop a dendro slime's head. Seconds later, a Cecilia sprouted forth from the ash in his hands. And this is new birth. This all talks about the art of Chemia, an advanced type of alchemy that focuses more on the creation of life itself. Gold, Rhindotter, and Abedo are the three characters we know of that practice Chemia. And from their lines, it seems like Chemia uses raw materials like soil, chalk, and dust to form life. It's like what atoms are for us. In Albedo's official introduction, it even says, The purest dust that gives birth to human life. And you know what Guizhong has dominion over? You know what power she has? That's right. Dust. So what I'm trying to say here is that Gui Zhong was trying to learn Kemia and Kainria as a whole just to understand all of these different factors that could benefit her because she wouldn't risk meddling with these dangerous arts without gaining anything from it. By doing this, it would help her understand Guili planes more to make it more prosperous like Kainria and help her understand the world more as well as understand her powers more. And this this is why Morax had to kill her. Let me bring this up. No one could have possibly killed Guizhong because of Morax. With her brains and Morax's bronze, they were practically unstoppable. Morax wouldn't have let Guizhong just die during the Archon War because of how powerful he is. Unless it was him who had to kill Guizhong. Now, why would he do this to his friend? Well, on the archaic Petra artifact set lore, the lore description of the Mask of Solitude Basalt says this. He knew right from wrong and never missed his mark. In those days of tumult, he would show no mercy, even to his friends turned foes. Rex Lapis' stone-cold expression never once changed throughout that storied age. They say that only when the dust settled did he lay down that unmovable visage. But it had been necessary, for he had donned it to fulfill a contract. What is this contract? Maybe this contract is about going against Kainria and or the art of Chemia itself? And who is this contract with? Celestia? The more powerful gods? Who knows? But this contract surely was the reason that made Morax have to kill Guizhong. Because of the line, when the dust has settled, like, it's probably a nod to Guizhong. Dust. I have two theories on how Morax found out that he had to fulfill his contract and kill Guizhong. Remember, he probably didn't know about all of these researches she did since it states that only Guizhong and Adepti created the Realm of Clouds. Theory 1. Another god stepped in to remind Morax about his contract after this god found out about it. Or Theory 2. Guizhong had to resort to using Kemia to salvage Guili Assembly and here is where Morax realized. On the Treasure Lost Treasure Found World Quest, one of the stone tablets say, And there they fought upon the Guili Plains where black dust choked the heavens and a thousand rocks splintered. Note, they only said a thousand rocks splintered and a black dust that choked the heavens. There wasn't any other combats that interfered, only Guizhong's powers and Morax's. And look, black dust. It seems here that Guizhong was getting desperate and had to even use Chemia because she simply cannot defend herself against Morax's power. Maybe even trying to convince him her explanation of why she did it. Until... Well, she died. To add to this, a god's anger after their death usually becomes a bad thing. This is how delusions work. So maybe the cause of the floods and calamities 
that Goba had to sacrifice himself to stop happened to Guili Assembly because of Guizhong's sadness and regret. So after she was killed by Morax, they finally exchanged their final words. It also makes sense here the reason why Guizhong's final smile was a lonely one. Because she's lost everything. She lost Guili Assembly, her people, her allies, and her friend Morax betrayed her. It is also why Guizhong said, as for that stone dumbbell, forget about it, would you? Because she thinks it's a lost cause. It seems like she saw Morax wouldn't even be able to handle all of her wisdom within the puzzle. And maybe this was the reason why after years, millennia even, he still hasn't been able to solve it at all. In his millions of attempts, he never got it solved. So yeah. I think Guizhong will be an important character in the future. Maybe the Abyss Order will try to resurrect and take control of Guizhong, just like what they tried to do with Osail. But who knows? At the end of the day, this is all just a theory, all speculations. Oh, thank you, by the way, for the, all the support in my last video about Skarmouche. <laughs> Even though it had so many copyright strikes there, you know, I just had to use it. It wouldn't have been a good video if I didn't use Bohemian Rhapsody. Like, it, it would have just been plain and bland. I saw all of your comments and feedbacks on the video and they were very wholesome. Even you, the guy who is watching me talk right now. I really appreciate it. Thank you for giving me the time of your day. The artist who made these illustrations again is Astronatu on Twitter. So I really want you to check them out because like, holy shit, they even made comics and crap. So I really recommend you to go and follow them and support them because I really want to see more good art like this. Like, especially since they go the extra mile as to create stories and lore behind their art. So, you, you know, I, I just, I just love, like, go support this kind of art. All right, go. Go, support them now, follow, like, I don't know, donate to them or whatever. So go support them. Alright, I'ma head out.